and I look forward to, to meeting as many of you as I can throughout the day. Uh, again, I'm, I'm uh, working on some of our embedded software uh, products, and so I'm, you know, please come to me uh, with the kind of you know challenges and requests that you have from our embedded software platform, because I am your direct link to to R and D, and the value that I get out of speaking with you is to understand how we can uh, innovate our products to to better meet your needs. Uh, all right. So without uh, further ado, I'll uh, start my presentation on, on web applications. Uh, so I am wondering, uh, as we get started, who here today uh, has used LabVIEW for developing a web-based application for using web services, uh, just by a show of hands? OK, so very, very few in the room. Who here comes from using uh, JavaScript or HTML programming to develop web applications? Okay, so only only a few hands in the room. Great. So this is uh, I think I think you guys are the right audience for this type of content. Uh, web developing web systems can seem like uh, a large mountain to climb, and so throughout this presentation, the idea is to give you a path forward. We're going to introduce some of the concepts in LabVIEW, and then also introduce you to the resources that are available for you to learn further. So we've, we've taken great care, in fact, inside LabVIEW to, to simplify the development of, of web applications. Uh, and in fact, on the roadmap, we've got, we've got fe further features in the next coming years to make that easier for you. Uh, because we know that uh, uh, we're living in a connected world. Everyone is trying to accomplish an IoT application today. Uh, connect their devices to the web and be able to surface data and even remote control through the web. Uh, so this will uh, increasingly become uh, an integral part, part of your jobs uh, as, as you move forward, or at least very likely so. So this uh, uh, cute little graphic demonstrates the agenda for today. Uh, so we'll talk about web services, uh, HTTP, uh, HTTP, HTML, and JavaScript, and we'll look at some demos of how to load uh, HTML code and, and JavaScript code uh, with our LabVIEW-based web services. And then uh, I'll put this website uh, up again at the, at the very end. We've created a, a short, easy to remember URL uh, that will lead you to a community, community page. And I can uh, show you what that looks like. very quickly, that uh, contains a huge wealth of resources from examples to tutorials uh, on developing web applications. The page is called LabVIEW Web Development. And by joining this community, you'll also be subscribed to notifications from members who are uh, asking questions and then also contributing code. So I, I recommend uh, noting, down, noting down that that you are and taking advantage of the ecosystem of developers working on similar projects. of when you might want to use uh, web services with LabVIEW, uh, it's often to create a remote access to, a, uh, to a, an application. And so today we've got many different options for connected UIs uh, to, for example, a, maybe an embedded device in this case, but this could also be replaced with a desktop device. You can connect UIs directly uh, if it's a component uh, LCD display or connecting to the embedded UI, which is a new feature uh, on some of our high performance Linux based embedded devices, or to touch panel PCs. But when some of these systems, and, and they could be desktop nodes or, or embedded devices, are running headlessly, you, and you want to have access from multiple different locations tablets and, uh, and phone devices to be able to access data and, and do some control remotely, then you'll want to look at implementing a web thin client so that you don't need to rely on a wired connection to that particular node, but be able to connect wirelessly over, over the network from any amount of clients. 
And so there's several different web clients technologies, uh, APIs that are natively built into the Labview palette. Uh, so some of these include uh, HTTP, HTTP communications, TCP, UDP, FTP. So these are all web-based protocols uh, that can be used for different uses for either file transfers, talking to email clients, HTTP is, of course, the, is the protocol that's most commonly used to talk to web, uh, web applications running in a browser. And, and then the Labview web server is one where we're going to spend a lot of our demo time today. And then there's also, because our Labview tools network is an open ecosystem of contributors, we've actually had developers on the community uh, create different kinds of add-on toolkits, such as LabSocket, WebPager, and Cloud Dashboard uh, that can kind of further uh, help you create web-based applications. So by some of these are free, some of them are for purchase, uh, and, it, and it just simplifies the process of creating web-based applications. But then you also have the native technologies to create these yourselves as well. So we'll spend a lot of our time looking at the LabVIEW web services. Uh, as the bulk of it. So what, what is a LabVIEW web server? Let's, let's take a moment to define this. So it's a, a process or an application uh, that is processing requests via HTTP uh, from the web. And so a, a LabVIEW web service will run uh, on either a dedicated server machine or your local machine, and it's going to intercept HTTP traffic coming from a, a browser client and then interact with your LabVIEW local VIs uh, in some way. So the service is this in the web service is this intermediary application that's talking to the web and then talking to your local VIs as well. So let's kind of map out this interaction right here visually to uh, to better uh, to better address how how it how it works. So the LabVIEW web service, again, it can be hosted locally or on a service machine, server machine, and a web browser is going to send HTTP requests to your web service to perform some kind of action to pull some kind of data. And an, an action, an example of an action might be to do a method call to a VI inside your LabVIEW project. And then you've got the, the option of having that VI maybe uh, send back some amount of data back to your web client. And the web service will seamlessly handle that transfer for you. In fact, as you're developing these applications, you don't really even see the web service. And we'll, and we'll, and we'll show that in the demo. You really only have to worry about uh, developing the VIs in your LabVIEW project and web services get launched and kind of handle this transfer of data in the background. Uh, so again, that's the way we've kind of simplified the, uh, the implementation of this uh, in relation to LabVIEW. So web services, let's, let's kind of speak practically now, uh, they're created inside your typical LabVIEW project. Uh, we would right click on my computer, we'll do that in the demo, we create a web service. Automatically a few folders are created uh, for private content, public content, startup VIs, and web resources. And we'll walk through, we'll walk through each of these. Uh, the ones we will use in the demos are web resources and, and public content. Startup VIs is a location where you might want to instantiate some VIs that are going to run some amount of startup code as the web services as the web service comes online. So you may want to load some configuration file from disk, as an example. You might put that kind of code in your startup VIs folder. Uh, private content contains VIs that cannot be accessed from any uh, public or remote browser location. They can only be accessed from within your web service project. So these are functions that you want to control the scope to be inside the project, can't be accessed externally. And then public content, this is where we're going to house things like our HTML uh, files and our JavaScript files because we want uh, remote uh, and, and uh, outside browser clients to be able to access them so they'll live in the public folder. And in fact, web resources where we'll put all the logic, the code behind our web services application. So what you don't see is that when you create a project in, in uh, your, or create a web service in your LabVIEW project and you start it, behind the scenes, uh, and you can check this on your, 
on your machine in the services window, it, in, it actually launches a NI application web services process in the background. So beyond just being able to uh, load different kinds of VIs and execute the functionality inside them, uh, web services can also uh, load static content. And by that we mean uh, HTML files which describe the view of, of, a web, uh, of a web application, JavaScript files which are the logic that runs behind the web application, uh, CSS files, which are style sheets that, you, that implement uh, uh, the uh, appearance, color, style, gradients uh, of a web application. And so web services can handle all four of these different types of formats. So let's uh, define let's define a, a URL. Most of us are, are familiar with using URLs, but uh, in fact, none of us really spend the or typically don't spend time to investigate uh, the the format of a URL. Is in fact actually uh, a web address and can contain uh, instructions for a particular website. So. HTTP is the protocol by which uh, we are going to access networked web, uh, web services. And in fact, the URL contains a lot of very useful information. The location at which a web service might be running on the network, so the host location, for example, uh, ni.com is a, is a host uh, for, for our website. And then a particular resource path, so as we add slashes uh, to uh, append to the location, then we're actually getting more and more specific in, in where uh, the actual application that we want to access is running. And then there's also a query string that will follow a question mark, in which we can pass some kind of instruction set uh, to a application running at, at that path. So let's now take a look at a demo so we can see in practice how this will appear inside a LabVIEW program. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate my screen here and we'll go and open up a LabVIEW project. Great. So I'll try and keep zoomed in so we can see what's going on. Okay, so let's walk through from scratch. Notice there's nothing in my project other than a saved project name. Off of the, uh, my computer is where I'm going to right click and select create web service. Uh, so automatically it's created uh, startup VIs and web resources for me. And I'm going to add a VI to my web resources. So notice that it doesn't create a blank VI for me. It's, it's familiar with the fact that I'm launching this from a web service. So it automatically loads a template that's specific to uh, the method, web method VIs is what we call them. Okay, so let's, let's fill this out so it does a couple things. We're going to create um, a couple controls here. Call this one A. Got another one here called B. And in fact, what we want to do is simply add these together. Try that up. Create an indicator. And we also want to, we've got this. LabVIEW web service request, uh, which is an input to our VI. 
uh, we need to do we need to do something with it. It essentially acts as a reference to uh, to the web service. And so let's add a function here from our. Actually, I'll go through the palettes. Let me just remind myself which one I want to add here. Re read request variable. So this read request variable, which uh, let's zoom out so we can see the help, uh, takes a couple things in. So it requires a requires an input of our reference here, the actual web service request reference, and. We're going to pass it a input, and in fact, we're going to give it a query string uh, because we're going to use the URL to pass it uh, a particular command. And then we're going to get a value out of that. So let's create an indicator on our panel. Now we're not done yet. We'll want to wire up. Uh, so in fact, the um, in fact the input terminals of a web method vi are going to be very relevant to that query string. So by wiring some of these controls and indicators to our uh, to our terminals, this will fa in fact expose them to the web service. So again, this doesn't behave just like any regular VI. It's a special web method VI, and the uh, the terminals uh, is what uh, by wiring those can actually expose them to the web service, so we can access them. Okay, so we've done a, a pretty simple VI here. Now let's see what we can actually get out of it. Uh, so in fact. Uh, let's actually be sure to save everything. Um, we'll call this VI add. And the name is going to be very important because the name of the uh, VI is what we're also going to pass from our URL as a command in the, uh, in the query string. So, just by uh, setting up the project, our web service isn't running yet, so we have to run it from the project by right-clicking and select Start. And now, you notice that my VI that I had instantiated or defined here earlier has this running arrow. And so that should indicate to me that my web service is running and that VI is actually waiting on potential requests from the web. Uh, that might be asking for it for some kind of information. So how do we then, from a browser, talk to this web service? Well, in fact, we've got a few uh, kind of shortcut uh, helpers here, such as uh, show method URL. So I can right-click on my method, I can select show method URL, and it's going to show me the URL address for that web method that's running in my web service. And so you can see automatically, again, it follows that kind of address path that we looked at earlier. This is the IP address of my local host machine, uh, followed by the port on which, uh, the network port on which I'm publishing this information, followed by the actual web service, uh, the name of the web service as I defined it in my project, and then followed by the name of my web VI, which was add. And then after the question mark is where I can supply that query string. And so it's given me uh, kind of a template here. Now, in fact, if I fill in these values and call it from a browser, I'll be able to receive data back uh, from this web method. So I'm going to select copy URL, give that a close, zoom out, and head to Chrome. And oops, copy that in. So let's uh, replace value 
with some actual uh, integer integer values here. And as I create run, notice that it gives me a pretty bare terminal like console like response, but it gives me that value equals 11. And so it, it spits out to me anything that I had in the terminals, which was I had an x plus y, uh, and I had a, a, a indicator called x plus y, and I had an indicator called, called value, uh, which returns the, the data back for me. Okay, so this isn't very pretty, but you can see that you know within a couple steps, I've already started publishing information to the network. So this doesn't look like a website yet because it doesn't employ any HTML, any style sheets, or any JavaScript. And so that's what we'll look at next is how you then build kind of the framework of, a, of an actual website uh, around this and then publish that from LabVIEW to the web so that your clients see a nice, beautiful interface that can give them some data back and they might even be able, and you can also uh, interpret control commands from the user uh, that is given through the web uh, browser as well. Okay, so let's go back to, oops. Slides. So, uh, and yeah, we've kind of looked at this already in the demo of how we had mapped what we had done in the project to the actual URL address. And in fact, there was a field inside our web service properties. So if we right click inside web services and go to properties, we can see that there is uh, a checkbox that automatically gets set uh, next to use standard URL mapping and use the VI name in the URL. So we have the option to expose this by checking this checkbox to, to the actual uh, website. We can uncheck this box if we don't want a website to be able to access uh, these particular VIs, if we want to control uh, the way in which we actually handle queries uh, from the website. Okay, so in that particular example, we were using the VI method calls uh, we saw that from our browser, we were able to give an HTTP request through the URL. Our web service, kind of in the background, handled that request and called a particular web method with the parameters that we allocated. Now let's take a look at some of the static content uh, that you can load as part of your web services as well. And so when, when we say static content, this refers to those HTML, JavaScript, and, and CSS files uh, that we have available. So let's define some of these real quick. And in fact, you know, these are standard web technologies, uh, and as such, there's a lot of phenomenal free learning content on the web uh, that you can access to get you uh, familiar with HTML and JavaScript programming. Uh, because it is a different syntax, and there is a, a bit of a, a learning curve to kind of understand. Uh, how it works, but it, it is a fairly, uh, fairly simple markup language. So HTML is a hypertext markup language, and you could think of it as the language in which you describe the look and the behavior of, of a, or the front panel of a website, if you will. And in fact, uh, let's go to Let's go to the website in W3Schools that we had actually linked in the presentation to see, uh, to see some HTML code in practice here. Uh, so this is, again, w3schools.com is a free learning site uh, to get familiar with HTML programming uh, web development concepts. Let me actually make things a little bit bigger here. And so on the left side, what you're seeing is, let's see, it's not all showing up on that screen, so let me just, uh, let 
move it over so that both the, both sides of the audience get the same experience. Great, okay. Uh, so on the left side, what you see is typical HTML text. And on the right side is the result of that. So this is the HTML that's running inside a particular website, and this is what you'll actually see displayed uh, based on that HTML text. So let's look at what we have inside of it. Uh, so there's tags, HTML tags, define uh, certain behaviors of text. And so H1 stands for header, and because I've wrapped my, my first heading text with these H1 tags, it indicates to the HTML engine that it should display it as a header, which has associated with it a certain font uh, size and, and, uh, and behavior. And let's, I'm gonna really quickly, So you can see how the uh, how this adapts as we change the HTML. So I'm going to copy in a set of HTML text that specifically su uh, supplies information about the font color and uh, the eye here, which indicates italics. So as I hit see result, I can start seeing things. Uh, change here. So again, the HTML really kind of describes the look and feel. So you can do a lot with uh, how uh, shapes um, or images, where they're displayed in, 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 in terms of kind of a matrix, uh, uh, how they're organized on the page in terms of location, uh, and then change text uh, appearance as well, kind of in the simplest use case. And then JavaScript, so that was HTML. Quick, you know, brief introduction again. I recommend going through uh, some of the web resources out there to learn a little bit more about HTML tags. There's a huge variety of tags uh, that you can use to modify the look and feel of your website. And then JavaScript, you could think of as uh, analogous to the block diagram. So it's the code that runs behind. It's typically, so JavaScript is kind of a scripting type of uh, uh, language that describes the behavior of the actual website. So HTML and JavaScript are typically used in combination. Uh, HTML describing the look and feel and JavaScript actually performing actions uh, on, uh, on data and manipulating the website in some way. So you could uh, think of them really as kind of the front panel and the block diagram, but they're written in two different languages. Uh, and so let's go back to our go back to our W3Schools website to learn a couple other things. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to show that's uh, kind of cool is uh, how easy it is to embed different uh, web-hosted items. So let's really quickly go to YouTube and say, for example, we might want to embed some kind of video into our website. Uh, so here's something about you know, cats which is everybody's favorite uh, animal that has essentially taken over the internet. So under the uh, YouTube link, you'll see something called share. And you know, share typically is, is a URL, an address of that particular video, right? But we also have the option to look at the embedded link. And so this provides us with the HTML string that Post this particular video on the website. And so if we hit copy and we go back to our simple little uh, simple little website here, we can in fact just paste that exactly into our HTML code and 
automatically it's displaying the video because it's really just pointing to an address where that video is hosted and popping that up and start embedding it into our, into our website. So anything that's hosted on the web can also be addressed and embedded into, into your website. Uh, and really what web services, LabVIEW web services doing is just kind of publishing your LabVIEW code as one of those items that can be used and addressed and accessed on the web. All right, so uh, the next, next topic that we wanted to look at an example of is, is in fact uh, JavaScript. Um, so let's launch an introduction to JavaScript. And we've got uh, an example, another one from W3 schools here that we can take a look at how JavaScript works. So again, I mentioned that uh, HTML and JavaScript are typically used together. And in fact, uh, even inside this, uh, the, the files are different though. So an HTML file is, is uh, labeled and formatted as a .html and JavaScript is a .js. Um, but the, the two can kind of cooperate and, and mingle together in a variety of ways. And so inside our JavaScript file, where in fact we've actually inserted a bit of HTML text inside of it to describe the look of this, uh, of this website. But then the JavaScript function, which appears uh, just below here, so we notice we've got this tag called script, uh, at kind of halfway through, halfway through, and in between these script tags is where we have inserted our JavaScript syntax code. And so again, because it, JavaScript defines the functionality, we can describe functions. Uh, for example, this function is called change image. And everything in between the brackets is the executed code that will execute when change image is called. And so when does change image get called? Well, in fact, in our HTML script, we see that we've got a image ID, uh, which is the source of which is this little uh, pic bulb op dot gif. And we have a on click. Uh, this is a, a function that's just part of HTML. You can use on click anywhere. And if on click happens, which means as it sounds, a mouse is clicked on that image, then it's going to call this function called change image, which we have design, uh, defined right here. So it, it looks intimidating as a LabVIEW developer because it's, you know, it's, it's all text based and um, it's a little bit more intimidating here because it's uh, the W3 schools doesn't uh, color highlight all the different tags. But if you open this up in Notepad, as you look at HTML script in Notepad, then you'll start to see that all the different tags are color highlighted, which makes them much more readable. Uh, Notepad++, by the way, is a great free uh, editor just for editing all kinds of different uh, text files. So I highly recommend downloading that for 